Um, <clears throat> Pam. Was Pam Rogers present and accounted for? Um, Pam, if you're listening, can you chime in? If you don't chime in, then everybody should know. I had asked Pam to be the... I don't know if I should use the word proprietor, but um, the one that you should go to for previous Mishlei classes. How about that? So last time I talked to Pam, she was looking for permission to uh, open the files from James Rogers, who's editing our videos and classes. So James, when you get this video tonight or tomorrow, mazel tov, shkayach to you. You're doing a very good job. Everyone appreciates it. And um, uh, I asked Pam to do it. So assuming that she gets access, which she will, and accepts the, the slight responsibility, which I cannot say she will, then assuming she does, everybody should feel free and comfortable uh, to message Pam and request previous classes, and hopefully Pam can get those out to you. If Pam, for some reason, cannot uh, see me, uh, Brian Stanick, are you able to do that if Pam can't? Maybe a one or two. All right. So if Pam doesn't come through for whatever reason, then uh, feel free to contact Brian and uh, get previous materials from him. Because all right, good. Because I, you know, we're gonna have a lot of ups and downs, holidays, new people, blah blah blah. Um, I just can't afford to go back and rehash a year's worth of work every time we have a class. So obvious reasons. And I'm sure everybody can lend a hand to new people to let them know what we're doing. So if, if anybody does come new, uh, you'll have one class probably of awkward phase. And then I think everyone can attest to the fact that it, it gets very easy very quickly. All right. All right. Ah, Brian Stanick. We left, like we did leave off. We did start. We started with La Havine. Am I correct? in in, in this, uh, this assumption of mine? Yes. All right. And I don't think we picked any verses yet. Am I correct? So let me close my Mishlei and get my Concordencia. Concordencia is the book that has all the verses in the, the Tanakh. Brian, make a list. Make a list. All right. We did say last time that Bina and Bon are different. Bon as in like a I wouldn't even call it a root, maybe. It's it's kind of a different word than Bina. It's actually the word Bane, which it's it's like Bina. Bina is to understand. We said that Bina Oh wow. You know some This is incredible. This is really incredible, what I'm about to tell you. This is mind-blowing incredible. Hold on a second. This is really nice. You know, it's always nice to see that, that you're sane. <laughs> so, you know, you get into things, and it's like, uh, it's good to see your work checks out. Years ago, I, I, uh, I made a claim to myself, that Solomon did not use the word Bina, like Chachma Bina, wisdom understanding, right? Now, I'm not sure if that's even a true statement, because I'm looking in the Concordancia now, and he does say Bina, but I think my attack on him was that he wasn't using it like in the traditional sense. You know, like like female Bina, like, you know, I want to acquire Bina, right? The female understanding. And, and I think of, of, of himself. And now I know why. Remember what we said, Bina, in our, in our school of mushling, Mishle in the plural, proverbing, waking up moron man, is wisdom is only proper wisdom when 
it is understood and understood as wisdom. One or two. Give me one or two if you're with me. So now it makes sense, right? Um, there you go, Pam. Are you good with the uh, the video the, the video requests from people, or should I put that with Brian? You with me? All right, great. So see, Pam. If for some reason Pam doesn't get back to you, she's busy or not just whatever it is. Yeah, keep her informed. If you, if she doesn't get back to you, see Brian. So here's a great answer, guys. So, again, I'm not even making the, the question uh, an accurate question because my life has changed a lot in perception since – I mean, this is going back like 10 years ago. And I'm seeing right here the word bean is used in the books. I can't remember exactly the angle I had. But the point is, is it's right in that Solomon's going to have Bina all the time in relationship with wisdom understanding. So they're never separate. And – Therefore, when he says Bina, it's always in regards to wisdom. When he says wisdom, there's a secret, you know, quiet Bina there with him. Wisdom, uh, Chachma, Bina, understanding, male, female, archetype principles. So this week, we're not talking about Bina. If you look at our verse, to discern, to discern is Lehavin in the Hebrew. Let's type that out for the people following along. I want to do the research. Lehavin. Did I do that right? No, I didn't do that right. What am I doing here? Lehavin. Let me see. There you go. Lehavin. And the definition, the concordancy of Lehavin is synonymous with Navun. And just extra work for you guys. You guys like to work hard. Dafyomi.org, Shabbos, 31A, go. And there you go. For those who want to do extra credit, read this link. And uh, the third, the last line, or basically no. Um, fifth, the last line, Amar Rava, for those who speak Hebrew. Fifth, the last line, fifth, two, uh, what was that? yeah, the last line, beginning. With Amar Rava. Okay? It says the things that a person needs to prove to God in heaven when he dies, which a long time ago we learned that is things that Noah, that Noah had Gare obviously have a portion of when you see the list there of things like fruitful multiply, it's obviously universal, which people don't teach that, but they should. And the point is, is that one of the things there is called understanding the matter within the matter. It's called navon in Hebrew. I typed it above. Navon. So the word lehavin, our word, is navon. Same word. Same type of thing. Remember we said that it means check it out. Checking it out. Right? If a man is the epitome of ma, which is What? Like the like wisdom, we say is the letters koach ma, the power of what? It's like you know, like, a, like you know, take uh, Neo out of context and put it in Keanu Reeves. What? <laughs> so it's, it's like the essence of man, you know, just what? Whereas woman is the opposite. It's hey, I don't know what. Let's check it out. So in Kabbalah, you call it man bon, the male principle, the female principle, the name of God, which has a gematria of forty five. In union with the name of God has a gematria of 52, the female principle, and they come together, what's called ma and bon. Ma is gematria 45, bon is gematria 52. So here we see that ma actually has meaning, right? You say the Hebrew word, ma, means what? And most people don't realize that bon 
just it literally is just a gematria, fifty plus two, bun. But it has meaning. Bun means to check it out or to understand the matter in the matter. So everyone that gets checked out by women, by there's I mean, what are you, what are you being checked out by? She is being navon, reading between the lines, understanding the matter in the matter. It's investigation. It's being able to perceive between the lines. Uh, it's very it's it's the epitome of being an understanding. And Torah learning is impossible if it does not come through navon. Which is funny because when people try to you know to educate us in the Rambam on Facebook. They are doing it not from a place of Navon, which makes it rather ridiculous. So here we go. What, Sh- what Shlomo is telling us is that we are proverbs, mushling. Give me one or two. You guys with me? We're going to go through our, our progression here. All right, we're mushling. So five seconds ago, you were all asleep, right? Just take, go through the meditation. Give me one or two. You were asleep, right? Yep, 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 yep. One, one, one. Right? You were all sleeping on me. Right? Yep. And then I said, all right, gang, mushling. Everyone woke up, right? And we're like, hey, wow. I thought this was going to be a boring class. And I remembered, oh, yeah, it's Mishle night. All right. Do you know wisdom? Wisdom that's known, understood wisdom, right? We've had, we have history with Mishle, do we not? It's a school of thought, right? We're going to investigate, right? One, two, one, two. Hello? That means there's things coming, right? And you were trapped, right? You were trapped in Musser. Then the phone just came. The phone just came. The Nokia phone just got delivered. And you're stuck. You are stuck. You're in driving school. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And then Morpheus delivered a phone with very cheesy instructions, like we're doing now. I am your host, Morpheus. <laughs> and you are stuck in a cubicle. And your own personal moron man is Agent Smith telling you, come on, this is boring. You have better things to do. And Morpheus is saying, you're going to go out that way. But there's a scaffolding. And that is called cooperation with Solomon's wisdom. Are you with me? It's either Smith and go home, or we go out the scaffolding through the words of Solomon. Those are your choices. I am making you choose. This is free will. It's up to you from this point if you muscle your brain or if you want to remain more on man. And it's never easy. Right? You're not going to have an easy walk in the park, fun time with Rabbi David Katz anytime soon. He's going to pound your head with a hammer, as Pam said, and we've got to go out that scaffolding. The easy ride is Asia Smith. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know the Rambam. I know it cold. All right, now, now the fun begins. If you passed this test so far, then now the fun begins. Lehavin, Brian Stanley, grab the microphone. All right, let's go, Brian Stanick. We're going to figure out which words to use for Lehavin. Ready? All right. All right. Let's see here. I think we looked up one word, if I'm not mistaken, Lehavin. Let's see where it came. I forget. Where did it go? One second. Levin. There it is, Levin. Okay, you know what? We'll look them all up. There's only a couple. Ready? Brian, with me? I'm here. All right. All right. Uh, Kings 1, 3, 9. Write it down, and we'll, we'll, we'll knock them all out. Mishle, 1, 2. Okay. Uh, Mishle 1 6. Daniel 10 12. Got it. Um, let's try to get some, let's try to throw in some curveballs. We have, wow, we got a lot. There's, um, 
the 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 concept appears 171 times. Let me try to cherry pick here and see if I can find something good. I don't know if we even should because I don't want to take the context out. You know what? Here I'm gonna look. Wait, hold on, hold on. I got it. Right, one sixteen. Uh, uh, right. So our word about like the female bond checking it out, that is the most literal for us. Um, also, Brian, write this down. It's not so much of Navon. I mean, it is, but it's not exactly where we we're going to go. Right. Solomon's going to take us on a bit of a different angle. He wants it to be Havchin. Which is to check out. So Navon, Navon means you naturally check things out. You just get stuff. You you have a gift. You have a skill. You're a Navon. Here, you know, ah, oh, well, that's good stuff. You are not a Navon. You're trying to become a Navon. Now, is that not Solomon 101? He's a guy. He's not a natural woman. So you're, you, no man can say... I am the king of Navon. That's like saying I know how to match my outfit like a woman. No one does. No man can do that. There's gifts that both both have, men and women. What Solomon is saying is Lehavin. He is he's mushling his brain because he wants to be a Navon. He wants to be perceptive. That's that that is that is the highest thing. By the way, I think I remember now. We ended with the with uh, kings, the kings verse. I remember that now. So we uh, we actually don't need to wipe off uh, kings one three nine. We already did that. We already did that. Um, so you see, Solomon, we're we're right on target. That you just got uh, divine testimony that we are on track because what we know about Solomon, where we've been, where we're going, it's all consistent. So he. Uh, Hasig Besichlo. He's trying to conceptualize from wit with his wit witty intelligence. Uh, and there's a lot of these. 111 to 170. So basically it starts from 111. Um, and the, the, the synonyms are paying attention. You know, check it out to pay attention. You know, like, you know, I am paying attention. You know, so once you crack the, the, the clipper and you're, you're in, that's one definition. Navon, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that naturally pays attention. And uh, also, oh, wow. Also, our definition is 1 through 65. So literally most definitions are ours. Are ours. Very few are not ours. Let's see. One. I want to get an early Clumish source. Let me just look for that. One second. I'm going to cherry pick here for a second. So give me a minute. So one to 65. Let's see here. So it's actually not very biblical. I want you guys to make a note of this. You know what I'm noticing here? That the biblical is more Navon. Brian, you should know who that is. One, one shot. Who, who, who's the biggest Navon in biblical history? Go ahead. Got it, Brian? Going once, going twice. Joseph. Remember? The dominance of Joseph, dominating spirit of Joseph. When Pharaoh pulls him out, he says, I'm looking for a guy who's a Navon. So have in mind for the word discern and Yavin and investigate. This is Joseph. So basically the entire first two verses, we have been speaking about Joseph. It turns out. And by that definition, I think it's safe to say that Mishle's at least first two verses, 
is very Mashiach ben Yosef. You guys agree with that? Right? We're, we're looking for the traits of Yosef. So we are really dissecting the psyche of Yosef. Very interesting. So the, the word of the Torah itself is pretty much Navon. It's in Bereshit, the prophet Hosea. Obviously, Mishle takes it up. And Yeshaya and Dvarim, Kohelis. It's the same, it's the same thing, really. So 1265, then you have 66, then you have 88, uh, 89 to 100. That is uh, a lot of Tehillim and Job. So King David wants to pay attention. Does that make sense to you guys? That should make a lot of sense. That's who King David was. Look, look at the difference. Look at the difference. You have a couple archetypes here. Joseph is your female, right? He's the one that's pretty, and he's one that Jacob loved. He's the guy that reads between the lines. He is your archetype messianic figure. King Solomon wants to become a guy who's not like Joseph, but he is a, he wants to conquer it, right? And it's not a natural gift for King Solomon. He wants to, to gain Bina. He wants it soldered in his head. King David is different. He's going to be the guy who simply wants to to pay attention. He's got, if you look in Psalms, what is King David saying? He's, he's, He's telling himself, David, pay attention. David, pay attention. He doesn't want you to tell him to pay attention. That means he didn't pay attention. I think one of the biggest secrets that King David does as he's looking for God to send him a wink. He wants evil to blink at him. That's King David to a T. If you want King David summed up, that's what it is. King David is saying, something's not right here. I'm going to pay attention because I'm probably going to see something if I pay attention. Whereas King Solomon is saying a little differently. He's saying... I got to I got to pay attention because I I know I'm going to see something. You guys see the difference between Solomon and David? Solomon is really anticipating like in a video game. You guys with me? One or two. King Solomon's saying, you know, there's, there's going to be a blip in the radar. King David is saying, if I don't pay attention, I'll miss it. Subtle difference. See the semantical the semantics and the difference. King David is saying, just you know, you know, pay attention, pay attention, keep keep focus, stay focused. Don't he's he's reminding himself not to become moron man. Whereas King Solomon is saying, now is not the time to be moron man. You're gonna miss it. <laughs> and Joseph is the guy who was not moron man, paid attention, but it was from a natural gift. Very interesting, I must say. Okay, so now we're going to go, I think, you know what? I want to do it. I want to sit on this for a little while, all right? I'll give give you guys a vote. Ready for a vote? Do you want to understand type A, if you want our verse, Understood, Lehavin. B, if you want Navone Solomon. C, if you want Navone Joseph. D, if you want paying attention, David. A, B, C, or D. Everybody, let's chime in. Let's go. Anybody else? <laughs> We're gonna do them all. That's a fact. We're gonna get to them all. Matter of preference. Anybody else want anything other than C? All right. Uh, what was C? Tell me again. Who was C? I was just going. To, uh, tell me again. Who was C? Joseph. All right. So we gotta find our Navone. Brian, write this down. Ready? 
Write this down. All right, so Navone is 66 through 87. And 66 through 87. Let's go with Isaiah 10, 13. Got it? Type one. Ready, Brian? Isaiah 10, 13. Genesis 41, 33, and 39. Hosea 14, 10. Kohelet 9-11. Dvarim 4-6. And the rest is in Mishle. Let me pick one good Mishle. Hold on. Mishle 10-13. And Mishle... 1815. All right. You know what? We'll keep going. I mean, we're going to do a whole list here. We're going to do one of King David. 89 to 110. Uh, 89 to 110. Um, Tehillim 107.43. And for our guys, for our, for our guy, uh, how many we have? One second. Oh, there was Navone, Seamlave, and check out uh, Levine. Let's go with. Um, let's look up our verse. We're gonna look up the wisdom, the commentaries of our verse. Mishle one two. Because it also contains the word Bina. I also want Mishle 1 6. All right, Brian, you got them all? Okay, let's take a breather for a second. This is going to be nuts. Hold on. We'll pull this up a little bit. There we go. All right. All right, all right, all right. Take a breather. I'm going to step out for one second. I'll be right back. Okay. Brian, if you take the microphone, where are we going now? Genesis? Let's go. Grab the mic. Um, now I want to do Joseph first. I want to do, uh, ah, you're right. Yeah. One second. I'm just here. Okay. Brian, grab the English. What are we at here? 10 13. All right. Shoot. Isaiah 10, 13, or he saith. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. okay. Just start with uh, 12, or start with 12. Really go slow for me on 13. Okay. Okay. Where, and where? that's it. Yeah, 12, 12 and 13. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Wherefore, Wherefore it, shall come to pass, it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed Lord his, his whole work, Upon Mount Sion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed... Wait, you broke, your, your voice literally broke up right on that word. 
Go ahead again. Go from my wisdom. Okay, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. Prudence. And that's our word. Yeah, keep going. And I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. All right, so you want to see prudent. I have no idea what prudent means. Um... 13. Let's see how the translation goes in Aramaic. It was the King Jimmy uh, translation. Mikoach Yadi. One second. Oh, 13. I Amar Bitkof Yadi. Power of my hands. Avadati. I did it. Ubachmisi. I was wise. Are Suchlasai. Suchlasai. If I remember correctly, Suchlasai was like this brilliance, right? But he was, but, but why? So if we said Bina is understanding wisdom, and he already says I was wise, ki amar b'koach yadi asiti l'chokmasi ki ah so nevunosi. See here, he's saying, he's saying, "Hey, everybody, I'm a wise man." You can't just tell people, "Hey, I'm wise. You should listen to me." He's saying because let me tell you why I'm wise, right? It's like, uh, it's like if you, you say, uh, I, I, "I, if I told you I knew what it was like at Woodstock," you'd say, "Wow, that's pretty wild. How are you there if you weren't even born yet?" Well, you know, it was this Gilgul, and I was there. Meaning, if you saw it, and you have if you have experience. It's kind of a bad example, Woodstock. But you know, like Chaim, Chaim, I asked him the other day why if he went to Woodstock. He said he was coming back from I think Maine or something. So he, he and he got stuck in a traffic jam and couldn't go, something like that. So uh, you know, had he told me he was there, then I have to believe that he knows what he's talking about because he would give credible testimony. So let's see now that. A person that has wisdom, they say in, in modern Hebrew, how do you know if a guy is a Makobal, a, a Kabbalah master? My friend told me this. He said he's got to have indikatsia. Indikatsia is like, like signs. You know, um, what's that word for signs? Indication. There's got to be indication. So here he's saying, I, I got indication that I'm wise. I'm brilliant. The Vunasi. Let's see if it adds up in the commentaries. Ready? Let's see here. That's the that's in the Aramaic translation. We got that. Me mehashnayim neiroyim. The Ezra. Mavni nifal. It's not so good. Let's see. Chachach malafami mekubelis of all abin arak bekoach amavin. Oh, very nice. This is the Malbim explained. Ready? Sometimes people just come across wisdom. Okay? Sometimes you can just say, do, do something wise. But to understand wisdom, right? To, to produce wisdom because you understand wisdom. Don't tell me that you got lucky fixing your car engine, right? You heard it going, and you, you looked up, you popped open your, your uh, hood, and you, you looked around, and you saw a loose screw, and you tightened it, and you drove your car, and it never made a noise again. Give me one or two. Was that a flash in the pan of wisdom? It was wisdom. It was wisdom, it, but it was not wisdom that you understand what you're doing. The difference is if you don't know how to pop the, the hood and you call your mechanic friend, Bob, you say, Bob, I got this thing. It's going da 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 And he would say, did you pop the hood and tighten the bolt? He'd say, no. He'd say, don't you remember last time you called me the same question? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Bob. You're great. 
Was that wisdom? Real wisdom that he understands wisdom? One or two. That was one. <laughs> no, the mechanic. The mechanic knew the wisdom because he, he knows how to fix it. The mechanic... <laughs> the, the, let me redo the marshal. Bob is the guy that doesn't know what he's doing. So the first time, the first example, he guessed and got lucky. He had a stroke of wisdom. Or better yet, let me get me paint you a better picture, even though my voice is on its way out. I had a bit of a, of a cold the last couple of days. My mother used to live in Las Vegas. So I visited Las Vegas a lot. Have any of you ever been to Las Vegas? Have any of you gambled in Las Vegas? Bam. All right. So a lot of people, when, you, when they've been to Vegas, they get a big ego trip. You say, hey, did you ever gamble? They say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You say, how would you do? Well, you know, I got this. I got this routine I do. Yeah, tell me about your routine. Well, I walk in, and I always find the table with the least amount of guys at it. Yeah? Yeah. And I sit down, and I crack my knuckles like this. And... That's right. That's exactly right. And I always look, if it's a left-handed dealer, I've been shown that it, I'm going to get a winning hand 63% of the time. Okay, way to go. You're, you're totally guessing. You have no wisdom, and you're a lucky guy. Agreed? He may have that one. I mean, for, you know, one time when I was a, an 18-year-old, I was down to my last quarter on a video poker and I got it up to 25 bucks and bought a t-shirt. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a gambling maven, but I definitely had a stroke of wisdom that day. The difference is, do you guys know how to win in gambling? I actually watched a YouTube video on this because I want to understand more about where, where, where my mother was coming from. You guys know how to win in blackjack? So apparently, this is from what they say on the videos. Going into a gambling room is like a weather report. Something like, uh, I'm making this stuff up you know, for, for terms of numbers. Don't, don't you know, gamble on my, my words here, literally. But let's say there's like five decks, three decks, one deck. right? You want five decks, and you want a payout ratio five to three instead of two to one. So apparently... You have to shop around looking for those tables that give you those odds. Now, let's say there's 25 tables in a showroom. Three of them have this deal going on. So if you don't know what you're looking for, you're walking into a trap. When you think you know what you're doing, you accidentally ended up on the right table. You weren't going to lose. But the guys that know how to gamble, they know how to walk up real nonchalant and say, hey, uh, what's the payout on this table? Oh, five to three. Oh, that's good. So the guy stands there for about 10 seconds. He looks at the dealer deal to see if it's one deck, three decks, or five decks. The dealer whips out five decks or you know, five decks. He says, we just found our table. He's going to sit down. And he's going to gamble until he gets comped, free room, and makes, you know, his 1000 bucks, 500 bucks, And then he walks away. Is that wisdom that comes from understanding? It is. It's a, it's a, it's a trafe wisdom. I'm not saying it's a good wisdom. <laughs> but it's a wisdom. I'll give you another example of trafe wisdom. When Peyton Manning exploits the defensive back in the football game, was that an accident? Was that just like a lucky backyard uh, pass? No. They practiced that 100 times in practice, knowing each time that defensive back was going to get tired because his name was Bob Jones. He's a, he's a replacement player. The whole team hates him. 
Bill Belichick, you know, did a report on the guy. It turns out he goes and gets drunk till three in the morning every night. And their star quarter, their cornerback doesn't come back till next week. What are the chances of Peyton Manning having a five touchdown game? Anybody? <laughs> Very high, right? So the, the the news reporters don't don't report that. They don't do that kind of investigation to find out what's going on. Anyways, the idea is is that people get lucky. They get stroke in the pan of wisdom, whereas, whereas real wisdom is where you understand what's going on, like you're driving secure in the car, you, you know what's happening, uh, you have experience, you're, you're, you're a pro at what you're doing, right, and you're, you're prepared. I mean, you see this all the time in sports. Anybody that knows sports should know this. You know, in my job class tomorrow, you're going to hear – I got to think up, actually. Pam, are you coming tomorrow to, to Job? Please remind me to pick up Job tomorrow on this point, okay? Job tomorrow is about the reason why I was horrible at wrestling was because I did not understand the, the mind that I had to be prepared going in. I was mentally unprepared. So if I got if I had a great match once in a while... It was a lucky move, a lucky stroke of wisdom. The guys that are great, they're prepared with, with known wisdom. I think my voice is going to cave in on me tonight, guys. But that's, that's the difference our verse is telling us, right? It's saying you got to be prepared. Don't get lucky. I, I, should, I really should have made a big glass of tea. Throw it. Uh, let me just read the rest of the Malbim of Nasim Atzmi. Let's read what Eats Hashem. Yeah, he's he's saying that it's pre, it's it's preparation. It's it's preparation, right? You have to be prepared in your mind. Pam Rogers will tell you you have to study to get this stuff. Is that right, Pam? You cannot rely on miracles now you will get miracles from god but that is not what it is to be a navon you can be wise you can live off the seat of your pants and be wise but you're not a navon you are not a navon if you want to be a navon if you want joseph if you want to read between the lines you got to be prepared and i am going to step out and make that tea i'm going to leave you with a little thing to think about what, and this is for you, Brian Stanek, where do we know from that Joseph was perhaps the most prepared mind in the history of creation? Anybody? Forget natural wisdom. That's Remember, we're saying this is not natural wisdom. You, you don't become a, a, a true Navon. Nobody is Swami with psychic powers. No. How did he how did he get dreams, Brian Stanek Jr.? Why did God give him dreams? What was his, what was his intake every day to even get those dreams? No. Ready? Study from where, Travis? Which is Shiva, Travis? No! <laughs> Shem and Aver. Shem and Aver. Bam. There it is. J Joseph was perhaps the greatest student ever in the Shiva of Shem and Aver. Look at this. Then, ze, kun, im. You guys ever see, you ever see that, that word in text? Ben Zakunim. You ever see this? I'm only being harsh because nobody ever thinks about Shem and Shiva. So Joseph was called Ben Zakunim, a child of elders. You know what they say the, the elders stands for? Zakunim. Was Jacob he was. But you remember Jacob also learned with Shem for I think fifty years. And so um, 
Joseph was called Ben Zakunim. It's a commentary on the Torah. I forget which one. We can look it up. That um, Joseph was buried also in the tents of Shem and Aver. I bring that up because nobody ever thinks about it in those lines. Um, and we know that Shem's yeshiva was the yeshiva. So Joseph was the most prepared maybe ever. That's why he was the most brilliant. I'll look it up in a second. Remind me in a second. Zakunim stands for, Travis, you like this, Zroyim, as in the tractate bracha, brachas, Kudshim, like holy food tractate in the Talmud, Nash, uh, Nazik, uh, wait, Nashim, like uh, Nida, Yavamos, Kedushin, Ketubis, Yud, Yeshua's, like uh, Baba Kama, Damages, in Moed, Shabbos and the holidays. So Ben Zikunim stands for all the orders of the oral Torah. So Joseph was the guy, you know, the, the oral Torah is what makes your mind sharp. It's where you have all the wisdom. That's why a, a Torah scholar is called a Talmud Chacham. He's got to have it all right smack in the front of his brain. So again, we're not talking about um, being smart, we're not talking about having access to brilliance. It's you know you guys you, you in terms of you know how I I got gear pretty good in the front of my brain. Agreed? Then we can agree on that. Imagine Joseph had the wisdom of the Torah of Shem in totality on the front of his brain. Is it true that Jacob established Torah learning schools in Goshen before they all moved there? Um, I never heard that, but possibly. So if, if the Torah of Shem is all the world's wisdom, Joseph had that wisdom on the front of his brain. I would say the only person in history that rivaled that was Moses. The only difference is Moses committed it to writing in the written Torah. Joseph kept it oral in the written Torah. So I think what we're saying is that Navon is the classic oral Torah master, where it's just total recall, fresh learning on the front of his brain. What do you think? One or two? Pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. I mean, anybody that's learned the oral Torah, Travis, I think you can attest to this, Brian, you too. When you, when you learn a material... You know what it's like to have it in the front of your brain, right? It's called Mochen the Godless. You just feel that uh, the power of the front of your brain just, you know, informed, like, you know, completely informed. Joseph had it on every level. And it's, and it's because the Torah of Shem. That's the power of the Torah of Shem. I'm going to step out for a second and get that either tea or water so that I need to get a drink. Um, Remind you when I step back in, we're going to look up Joseph and Ben Zakunim in the tents of Shem. Be right back. Okay. That feels better. All right. We got to find Joseph. All right. We did Isaiah. You guys feel good about Isaiah? I did too. All right. Where's the verse of Zakunim? Anybody can find it for me? Ben Zakunim. Anyone beat me to it? Anyone? Anyone? The ch- a child of elders. Let's see what it is. Travis, you got it? Oh, man. Long day. 
Grab the microphone if you have it, because I'm looking at my book here. I didn't give it. This is a this is an extra credit assignment. <laughs> Let's see here. You know what? I'm going to tell you something funny. Watch this. You're going to like this a lot. Anyone find it? Here, I'll find it. Hold on a second. Rabbi Google to the rescue. Genesis 37.3. Ah! <laughs> Where? Genesis thirty-seven three. There you go. You saved the day just before Rabbi Google. Thirty-seven three. So you know what I'm thinking. Ben Zakunim. You guys remember how we started today? We said that the female bond, right? I'm gonna go on a limb here and say at least I'll be drush. It's Ben Zakunim, Navon Zakunim. Joseph investigated the elders, a Navone with the elders. You guys like that? I think that was a good shot right there. Yisrael Ahav is Yosef Mikol Banav Ki Ben Zikunim Hu Lo Ba'asolo Ksunas Pasim. Wow, that's probably the most powerful verse in the whole Chumash, quite possibly. Uh, Israel loved Joseph from more than all those sons, he ben zakunim who he was a this ben zakunim a child of elders. I'm gonna call him the navon of the sages. I think it's the best shot on that thing. Now that we know what ben means, um, uh, to him he made for him a ksunas pasim, a, a multicolored tunic. Okay, Rashi on zakunim ben zakunim. Shinular lo das zakneso was born to him das knowledge uh, zaknoso like of, of an elderly of the elders and the unculus Aramaic targum bar chakim who he was just he was born wise see that guys that we were mis- that this is the word you say in Hebrew. James, guys, no, you like this. We were James. You here? Give me a one or two. Are you actually here? Are you do? Are you? Uh, are you? What are you calling it? Uh, lurking. Um, we were miscaven to the Aramaic Uncle's translation. James, we were miscaven because we said at the beginning that by the by the terminology contrasted with Solomon. We say that Solomon worked at it and Joseph was born that way. You guys remember us saying that? Um, Well, he married to be born in Jacob's house because he was born that way. You know, it's like a lot of times father, son, you know, Ken Griffey Sr. played baseball and Ken Griffey Jr. was born to Ken Griffey Sr. because he was going to be great and he had the merit then to be born amongst the greats. So we see it's true. Joseph was great. And he was born great, with wisdom. He was born wise. Kol ma shalamid ah. Here it is, Pam Rogers and Travis. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Bar chakim hu lay. Kol ma shalamid all what he learned. Mishem ve'aver from Shem and Aver. Maserlo was given over to him. How do you like that? How do you like that? Rabbi Katz is making this stuff up. This is just, he's silly. No one ever heard of this. No one ever said it like this. No, he makes this stuff up. He's he's running a cult for crying out loud. So maybe it's a cult or maybe it's just, you know, Rashi and Unclus. Who knows? Um, so he was born naturally wise. My personal shot, which I think you got to say it based on what we're seeing, Ben is language Navon. Uh, this is, as Travis said, Brashi 37.3, Rashi, quoting Unculus. 
the Aramaic translation. How cool is that, guys? How cool is that? So let's read Uncle's inside and see what it says. Israel Rachim Yas Yosef Mikol Benohi Ari Bar Chakim Hu Lay Va'avid Lay Sunas Tafsai. So then Rashi says, Uncle is target Bar Chakim Hu Lay. Ah, so Rashi quotes Uncle and then explains what that means. So as a youth, in his natural gifts, he went to Shem and Aver, I guess right outside my door, and learned everything was given over to him. <laughs> Literally, he must have been outside in the cave. Who knows? Um... Let's see here. Anybody else want to say anything on this? Also, the ball of Torim, for those asking. Um Shamasrolo, Kul Mashakibo Bizaknadim, Shahim Shem and Aver. Um you got let's, let's look this up. What do you guys you guys you, you guys like this? Um Balatorim says to look in Barashis Rabba eighty four or eighty four eight. Let's get that out here in a second. 84.8. You can get it in a second. Hold on. All right, let's get that out. 84.8. Okay. All right. 84.8. Eighty-four eight. Eighty-four eight. And here we go. Here it is. And Israel loved Joseph, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Nehemiah. Rabbi Yehuda says, Shehaya Ziv Ikonin Shalo. I think it's that there was a. Let's see the commentary on this. Is that word mean? Zir Ziv Ikunim, Notrikun Shel Zikunim. It's another way of saying the Zikunim, like the elders, right? Because Zion of Zikunim. Ah, ah, woohoo! You guys see that? He's saying that Zikunim is a uh, smash up of Ziv Ikunin. The, the glow of his face, the wisdom of the face, and he had the, he had the knowledge of reading people's faces. So the clock was a part of. Selim Elokim. Right? The face of Joseph was the whole thing. He could read your face and he had a face. That's why Israel loved him. So Brian Stanley, like the awesomeness of Joseph was literally the face. What's the next thing I'm going to say? What's the obvious next thing I'm going to say? If we're saying that Moses is in the same school of Joseph, did not Moses' face glow? So this is what it means when Moses' face glowed. He had the, the awesomeness of Joseph. And this is Kola Tor of the Vilna Gun 101. That jo Moses took the bones of Joseph, and the essence of Joseph. Rabbi Nehemia says... Shekol halacha shemasru shem ve'aver leYaakov masran lo. Everything they gave over to Jacob. I guess you can also say Jacob included with Shem and Aver. Everybody gave everything to to Joseph. But he learned in the base medrash of Aver for fourteen years. 
But he didn't just love him. He loved his mind. That he saw that the wit and great Navon was with him a lot. He received all the wisdom and he understood every drop that he got. That's what Uncleus means. So there's a there's a mitzvah to honor a Talmud Chacham. That mitzvah is in the Torah by Pnei Zaken, the face of the elder. And a Zaken is only somebody who has acquired wisdom. Pam Rogers, what's the very next verse in Vayikra? By honoring a rabbi? Don't talk the gear. So in the Shemona Esrei, in the, in the Amida prayer, when we include the Gerim Tzedek, it's the Gerim who learned the, the wisdom of the Tzadik elder who has acquired wisdom. So a true Ger Tzedek, in the philosophical sense, is a Ger who seeks to acquire wisdom, and particularly in the mold of someone like Joseph. Like that would be the archetype. And so the, the, you get that mitzvah from Joseph, which makes sense why Garam, lost tribes and stuff, is associated with Joseph. Would also make sense why in Kulator, for redemption, why why are the exiles called Ephraim? And why is everything called Ephraim? Because it's it's the aspect of coming back to Joseph. You know, like the students of Joseph. Joseph is the rabbi, so to speak, and the lost souls really are Garam looking for Joseph. And that's how redemption starts. All right, I'm gonna step out for one more one more second. I'm gonna get another drink here. My my throat's dying on me. Um and we'll get ready for one more verse. Brian, if you'd have the next verse pulled up by the time I come back. All right. All right, where are we at? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will do Joseph, 41, 33, 39. Then we'll end for today. So you see, it's pretty hard to tell people that they have to be a Navone and then say it's from Oral Torah, and then it's like the wisdom of a Talmud Chachem, and it's from Yeshiva, and it's Joseph. How in the world, if you don't know about Ger and Shem, how do you get Joseph in Yeshiva? You see the problem theologically? It's going to turn into Joseph worship, right? Joseph was this super sodic and super powers. It doesn't work that way. It didn't, Shem wasn't Superman either. I mean, Shem got it. There's a whole documentation of how Shem, exactly. That's the issue. Just, wow, I'm enlightened. God loves me and just gave me a bunch of free stuff. Let me give you a bunch of free stuff too. There's a tradition. Solomon says, wisdom is a school of wisdom. You don't just wake up one day and say, I have the truth. Everybody... Come to my cult. That's why it's silly when people say anything's a cult that you know that we're involved in Garen's. It's just stupid. It's 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 like yeah, it's it's like saying you know I was bored yesterday, so I decided to hit my head with a baseball bat fifty times just to see if I would bleed. No one says that. <laughs> yeah, it's just stupid. You know, the Shem and the Torah of Shem is a real thing, right? Rashi wasn't joking. Unclus wasn't joking. Paul of Torah wasn't joking. Midrash Rabbah wasn't joking, right? The, the Chumash about the Zakia Hadar, Hadar's Panim wasn't joking. There's a tradition of wisdom. That's what makes Torah possible, is that there's a tradition of wisdom. You don't have to make stuff up, and you don't have to guess. It's already there. 
You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's no, there's no point to lie. You know, it's just, it, it, it just it's, there's no gain. None. The hard part is, is to find and connect the dots so that the story makes sense. You know, the, people don't realize that there was, before Abraham, there was a, a world of Torah through Shem, Aver, and the Garam, and God fears they call themselves by. That's true. So, but the thing is, if you don't have the Torah of Shem in mind, you're not going to get Joseph. Point blank. If you don't get Joseph, you don't understand Moses. Moses is the issue. Point blank. Because Moses also didn't wake up with a, in a fairy tale. He studied the wisdom. He had that brilliance of Joseph. It's a tradition. Abraham studied with Shem and Aver. Shem and Aver got it from Hanoch and became Metatron. Hanoch and Metatron got it from Sefer Raziel from Adam. And there was an Adam. No one's going to dispute that. There was a Noah. So it's brilliant. When you see, this is what the World of the Gear book is about. I think on the deepest level that, we've, that we know of, that we did it. That there's a continuum of righteousness, Torah, and wisdom, and prophecy, and power of God through mankind. Number one, you have to understand that there, there was a, a, such a thing as mankind. So if there, if there was mankind, doesn't that kind of necessitate that we, are, we have to be part of mankind today? Doesn't that make everybody alive have the right to mankind? So mankind never has been devoid of the power of God. That's what the world of gear means. It means, and if you look in the approbation front cover of the book, Rabbi Schwartz translated the word gear. You can look in your own books if you have them handy. When it says the world of the gear, in parentheses, mankind. Joseph, Genesis 41.33. That's why I can't stand the opposition. It's just a complete denial of reality. That drives me insane. It's complete denial of just truth, God, Torah. I mean, it's a Hill Hashem. And I'm sorry, but it is. Now, you're going to say that the Rambam says there's no Gir Toshav today, therefore Rashi and the Midrash Rabbah are wrong. How do you get from point A to point B like that? Right? Mitch Hedberg told a joke once. He said he went to a restaurant, and the waitress said, uh, what can I get for you? And he says, I'd like a chicken sandwich. And the waitress says, how, do you, how would you like me to cook your eggs? And he said, well, now that, now that you put it that way, incubated, and then raised, and then grown. And then killed, and then plucked, and then cut up, and then put on a grill. I don't have time for a sandwich like that. Scrambled. <laughs> you know how do they get from how do they get from Rambam Ger Toshav to that the bald term was wrong about Joseph and Shannon? <laughs> Makes no sense. And then to say that's why there's no gear. I mean, it just makes no sense. All right. V- verse 33. Go ahead, Brian. So now let Pharaoh seek out an understanding and wise man and appoint him over the land of Egypt. Ish navon v'chacham. I want to see the gematria of this, just out of curiosity. 311, 411, 413, 419, 425, 433, 470, oh, I lost count. 311, 411, 417, 419, 425, 433, 453, 493, nothing. Initial letters, nothing. Uh, end letters. End letters are kind of interesting. Spells Shemin. Shemin, which is oil. 
as in the anointing oil, which the Ramchal says is the wisdom of Malki Tzedek upon Mashiach. Kind of makes sense here, doesn't it? Uh, let's see now. Okay, who are we going to first? Uncles. Like I said, I'm just kind of worn out because of the, uh, been under the weather for a couple of days. Bear with me. Ukan v'chezi paro gvar. This is nice. I did I did research on this word gvar uh, a couple of days ago. Gvar means guy, but like Wrangler jeans type of guy. You know, MacGyver. I know he doesn't look like a guy, but he's kind of a late wimpy guy, but the cool things MacGyver did was a guy thing, right? Very typical male. You know, a, a, the point I'm making is the Kohanim of the temple are called Gvar, right? They're hacking away at sheep. You know, there's, I mean, you can imagine the manliness of the temple, one or two. They were not pansies. Let's put it that way. So it's it's a man of wisdom. You know what I mean? It's you know when when a, when a real why I'm not talking a man with a fu man chew and a you know and a walking cane. Okay, I'm talking about a man with manly masculine wisdom. If you can imagine such a creature. I mean, the Kohen is the Bible version of that. So the word here for Ish is that. Man, meaning that the, the Pharaoh saw this guy is going to get it done. Right? This guy is going to get it done. In a very, not aggressive way, but you understand what I'm saying. He's going to get it done. Okay, so that's Gvar. So Pharaoh agrees with Shem and Aver. Chakim. He, he's, he's just this wise guy. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Joseph is the guy, I think the best word is wit. He was witty. You know, it's it, Joseph could have end, ended up in Antarctica. And the penguins would have said, this is a this is a caliber chap. You follow me? Wherever he goes, people are going to say, "That's put that guy in charge. That's the guy you want to have. Is Suklasen. That he was brilliant. Brian, let's look up the word Suklasen once again. I, wanna, I don't want to rely on my previous understanding from however many months ago. Suklasen, ready? This is the real main Iker word. Suklasen. We're trying to be a people who are su, su, have suchlosen, suchal, suchlosen, suchal, sichla, sachla, 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 to be bright, to observe. To reflect, keep in mind, right? That that loaded brain we're talking about. To see clearly, to be sensible, to become wise, give to understand, to explain, to look at, to become confused. I'm starting to love this term to become confused. I looked up a, a thing today on the internet that they were they were blaming Michael Shulman for con, um, what's the word conflating terms? What's the word conflate? Is that the word? Conflation? Conflate? And so I made a post a while back. Remember that gear is conflated. That's that's the essence of the oral Torah. With you know one word that can have many meanings. That's gear to a T. So if, if if you're not confused with gear, there's a problem. It's supposed to be confusing. It's like putting together a dresser from IKEA type thing. You know, are those things not nerve wracking when you do it wrong? 
but, but then you know it's a caliber product because if it's not confusing, you probably don't want it. It's made in China and it falls apart. You want things, the best things in this world are, it's, you have to study. You have to. That's just the way it is. The best, you know, the best things are when you, when, 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 it, when it's confusing. And you have to iron out the confusion. Why does nobody ever want to have brand new windows? Because you have to, it's confusing. Why does nobody ever switch to Apple after they've have, have, have had windows? Too confusing. But you know Apple is a superior product. You don't do it because you don't want to be confused. But when you do it, when you learn a new system, that's when you break through and your mind really, really shines the brightest. Okay. Now, commentary. Uh, Rashi says Mizuman. No, sorry, wrong word. That's Nachon, none of them. Let me see here. 33, 33, 33, 33. Orachayim. Das, Ofen, Otsros, Hatvua. So, kihu dvar hama akiv yosur kadesh mefayim atvua. Das chokma to shibuiris the hidden dasa saper the hakim the vod. One second, what's he saying? No das often those words from the vod. The bone to karam is zeh the atvua. Mamru chokma shigadei chol yosur chokmas the das chokmas to shibuiris the hidden dasa. That like Joseph knew Joseph knew what to do. He knew the land and the territory. So that's why it's that gvar. You see what I'm saying? He didn't he didn't give a ridiculous Aitsa, which is counsel to Pharaoh. He told him something tangible. And that's why it's oral Torah. Anyone that's ever learned the oral Torah knows it's very earthy. Right? The very first Talmudic stance is what time can the Kohanim eat truma, which is holy food? I mean, it's just kind of earthy. So Joseph would have been a master of that. And anybody, well, I translated this, this for the book the other day. What I was teaching in the book was the laws of the agriculture of Eretz Yisrael double as Kabbalistic code. So here's proof. Joseph knew the land of Egypt. Why? You can only say because Shem taught him the true earthly wisdom. The real natural wisdom of the universe. Where divine, the, the divine Elohim 86 hides in nature, Gematria 86. Ramban. Ramar lo shi yitztarek le ish na vam chakma shi yimamun al chula aretz vi afkir od akim tachtam shal chula aretz vi gazul chula ol chal ki yeah, so he knew how food industry worked. Point blank, Joseph is a Cohen. Maybe not literally, he's not of Aaron, he's not of Levi, but in the, in, the, in the real practical sense, just like in Psalm 110, it says to King David, you are a priest by my word, Malkitzedek. Abraham came a priest from Malkitzedek. Right? Joseph learned from Shem. For all intents and purposes, he is very priestly, meaning he knows that wisdom of you know how the temple works. Now, remember, this is pre-temple, so it's, we're not saying he's a Kohen, but man, he he knew what he was doing. What's the other verse, Brian? Thirty-nine. All right. By Yomer Faro El Yosef, Brian, go ahead and give us the translation. <clears throat> 
Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has let you know all this, there is no one as understanding and wise as you. Say it again. Forty-one thirty-nine. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has let you know all this, there is no one as understanding and wise as you. Uh, I didn't hear you say understanding first time. Ain't the, uh, so under, let's see what he, let's see what we got. Valmer Pharaoh Fer Yosef Basar Lahoda or Nai Yasach Yas Kol Dat Le Sachlosun. All right, again we got the word Sachlosun. And Rashi Levakish Ish Davon Vachacham Shemart Alonim Sachamocha. He doesn't even translate it or explain it. Uh, so and uh, or Chaim Parish in the Vomachacham Shi Rui Lasso Dvar Zek Mocha Shata Yeshbacha Ruach Elohim. Ah, there it is, Travis Ruach Elohim. There it is. There it is. The spirit of, of, of God, such as it's it's the highest levels coming into the lowest levels. All right, so the, the, the Madrega here, the level is Ruach Elohim. Brian, keep that in your notes. Oh, there it is. It's verse 38. Brian, read 38. Read 38. So Pharaoh said to his servants, Will we find anyone like this man? I mean, like this, a man in whom there is the Spirit of God. Very nice. So the uncle translates Ruach Elohim as Ruach Navua. Gvar Dai Ruach Navua. You know, is Elijah is a guy, isn't he? Isn't he a traditional guy? You know the hair and the the, the 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 clothes, and he's a guy, and he's a prophet of prophets. Here, Uncle says that Joseph is a guy. We never thought of Joseph as a guy, but he's a real guy, and he's ruach navua. Where did Joseph learn navua? Who had the biggest and, and, and you know most operative school of prophecy ever? Shem and Aver. So here you see Joseph, there's a trail of breadcrumbs all through our tradition that people will deny and say, I'm making this stuff up. That there's a trail that shows that Joseph literally mastered the school of Shem and Aver. From wisdom, prophecy, Pharaoh saw it, Potiphar saw it, Jacob saw it. It's just, it is what it is. So, Brian, to answer your question, could he not have had dreams? <laughs> Was that even an option for Joseph not to have dreams? So now you can understand why the brothers were upset. He it took him all to school. We've already covered what that means, taking someone to school. They are sick of it. He gathered the wisdom from what he saw and heard. Mavin Atidus Varoa Anolad. Here, the Rashbam. Mavin, he knew what was planned for the future. And he saw it happen. Is this not amazing stuff? He literally was the visionary of all visionaries. He knew how to investigate dreams. And he had the Chachmas Derech Eretz. He knew how the world worked. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, after learning this today, the master of masters of the school of Shemineva, 
Yosef ben Yisrael. You can quote me on that. Moses was, I'm going to correct my, uh, my opinion here. I used to say that Moses was a master of the school of Shem. Moses was a master of the school of Joseph. What's my proof, Pam? Where did Moses grow up? The house of Pharaoh. Where would, it, where would the, the legend of Joseph's wisdom have been kept the most pristine? In, in Egypt, in the house of Pharaoh. Moses had direct access to the brilliance of Joseph more than anybody that ever lived. Joseph prepared redemption. That's why Moses knew to took his bones out of there. I would say Joseph mastered it more than Yaakov. That's why he's like the, the quasi fourth father. Yeah, he was valedictorian. He really was. You're seeing it. I mean, look, Jacob was great. He was one of the forefathers. And he was great in his own right. But in terms of Torah scholarship, we know that Yisod comes out of Teferit. Kabbalistically, it works out. And I would say the final redeemer, Mashiach ben David, you know, the David Moses program, is the one that receives the, that wisdom in the final revelation. The final, the final, the final drop of wisdom is just, you know, the four craftsmen, Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, the man Eliyahu, and the Torah of, of the Kohen Sedek. How do you guys like that? That really is what redemption is. Torah, Kohen Sedek, Shem, the manliness of Eliyahu to, get, to hold that wisdom, Mashiach and Yosef, Mashiach and David. That's it. That is truly it. One more book. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to look this up in the Midrash Gadol. What's our uh, chapter head again? Where are we at? 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 39. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I can't talk so much, so we'll just mumble this one. Oof. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. 41, 33. So Joseph was special be, that Pharaoh... How did Pharaoh see Joseph was great? Another way of saying it is, what was Joseph's mastery from the school of Shem and Aver? Lushen HaKadosh, the Holy Tongue Hebrew language. That Joseph spoke Hebrew which was obviously known about at that time because of Shem and Aver, but nobody understood the Hebrew. Joseph came, understood the Hebrew. They knew they had their guy. It's that simple. That simple. Since Adam in the garden, Hebrew is, was, always will be the benchmark. How do you know when you got the guy? The master of Hebrew shows up. King David, Moshe Rabbeinu, Yosef at Sadiq. And so that's how he knew. That's how Pharaoh knew. Do one more book for you. Mm -hmm. Collection of Midrashim. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, uh. Forty-one. Forty-one. Thirty-nine. Thirty-three. Let's do, let's do thirty-nine. That seems to be the best one. Okay. All right, he's just quoting the 70 languages. Let's look at 33. He says, what, what does it mean, Navon? Good question, huh? What does it mean, Navon? Navon ze ha mevin devar metoch devar. Understanding the matter in the matter. Chacham ze bol chachma. Now, are we? This is James Gosnell. We were totally miscommunicated this tonight. You see this? A chacham, a man of wisdom, ze bal chachma. This is the guy who knows all the chachma. Right, Peyton Manning is this in football. He is a navon in football. Bill Belichick is a navon in football. Steve Jobs is a Nav- was a Navon in how to make you buy an iPod. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Warren Buffett is a Navon in, in Wall Street stock market. Now take that trafe kite and think, imagine the ancient wisdoms of Shem, Torah of Shem. I'm talking the real McCoy. The Talmud Chacham of that school, the guy that knows all that, not that he can just naturally kind of, eh, you know, I kind of figure it out. He knows it. Aunt Joseph. Navon Enu Chacham Dome Legibor. Vein Kaili Zion Biyado. Remember we said that a Navone's got to be a tough guy? But he's not going to be a barbaric guy. Chacham ve'eno Navone Dome lechalash. Wait, okay, just one second. Hold on. Navone ve'eno Chacham. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Back up, back up, back up. Navone ve'eno Chacham. Somebody who sees it but he doesn't know the school of it. He doesn't make it a point to master it. Dome le Gibor. He's like a warrior. The Ain Kaili Zion Biado, who doesn't have a weapon in his hand. It's like a, a street fighter that doesn't learn the art of MMA. He's going to get really beat up bad in a match against an MMA guy. Chacham ve'enu nevom. A guy who knows the wisdoms because he just memorizes it from Wikipedia but never learned it once from himself. It's like a weakling who has a weapon. It's like if you give me nunchucks and I think I'm Bruce Lee. I'm not Bruce Lee and I will get beat up. Navon v'chacham harizeh gibor v'ozayin. A guy like Joseph, who was a navon and chacham, is a warrior with a weapon. Was I not, again, did we not miscav in this, James Gosnell? Is that not Elijah the prophet? Is that not Elijah, the manliness of Elijah? A gibor with a weapon. Who else do we see like that? King David. So if King David took out Goliath with a slingshot, I'll close on this note. King David was a navon in a gibor. Or navon in a chach. David, Elijah, Joseph, Moses. Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob. You guys understand now what Navon means? Proverbs. Marshal your brain. Don't be more on man. Know wisdom. I think now we understand a little bit differently what it means to know wisdom. I think now we have the full definition of knowing wisdom. And instruction. I think now we know what it means instruction. You need to become valedictorian of Shem and Aver. To discern. which is to be able to use your weapon and be the gibor. So the first part of the verse is the construct, training with Morpheus. Then you got to fight Smith and take him out. So to discern means that you have arrived at discerning. You are, you are already doing it. You've reached Solomon's dream level. I would say Joseph was the closest we've had that got there, along with his friends that we, 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 that we mentioned. 